Hey everybody and welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen. I'm with the Smith Hill Library, part of the Providence Community Library here in Providence, Rhode Island. And today we're going to talk about this tester's Talleret kit, which is the Opal Maltier, if I'm pronouncing it right. This is a Opal Blitz truck that has been converted to a half track. That's what this is. This kit's been around a long time. This particular one is like a 1980 boxing from Testers. I really like the, the Testers boxes that they had back then with these great photos of the model kit. I'll take a peek at that. Does it give you a good idea of what you could expect in the box? Well, providing you built it correctly. <laughs> and that's part of the challenge, and we'll look into that in a second. So, let's do a little background on this kit. So, the tester's kit came with a lot of uh, good information. The Italeri kit may not have come with all of that, hard to tell. So, Maltier is uh, the German word for mule, and this is developed to handle the immobility. <laughs> that they ran into uh, dealing with the roads and the muddy conditions on the Eastern Front during World War II. So the Germans are finding that their trucks are just getting bogged down in mud and just couldn't move. So they converted the back half of the chassis by adding, at, originally, um, the suspension system of a captured Russian tankettes. That was the original uh, version of this was that it would use, you know, recycled, captured Russian parts and threw that on the back of one of these trucks and made a uh, functional half track out of it. They later uh, sent these out to, uh, well, back to the factory basically and created a line of uh, half tracks purposely built but these were originally uh, converted on uh, yeah, the light tanks. And they figured that when I went into production that between all the manufacturers, about 6,000 of these things were built. So not bad, huh? Quite a lot of them. And this particular one of the uh, Opal had a nice um, Opal Blitz body, but there were other versions of this, like they converted Ford trucks and a number of others, and they also did, about 600 of them were produced with an armored body, so they were more, you know, heavily armored, uh, with armor plating, and they also had some that were, <laughs> at the end of the war, that were, had, you know, the cabs made, made out of either cardboard, believe it or not, or wood. So there are a lot of different variations of this, but this is the Opal Blitz uh, conversion that we're looking at here. And even though they were designed for the Eastern Front, um, these things saw service in North Africa, Italy, Western Europe, and was even used by the German Air Force and the Waffen SS. Though it was originally a stopgap solution, but it turned out to be so effective that they uh, they just kept going with these things, and uh, some of them were even used in civilian service after the war. So it was a pretty great ad lib, <laughs> shall we say? All right, let's look at the model kit, and um, I've got this kind of been working on it, so I had the, took the liberty of taking the uh, instructions. Uh, making them a little more workable. So one drawback I, I found is that, all right, so it has a parts tree here, but it's one of those kits that the numbers are not on the parts tree. So you, you have to look at the diagram in order to find the actual part numbers. You can't um, look on the tree and find, oh, here's number 10. It's not there, it's not numbered, it's, it's here. So it does take a little bit of extra time to cross-reference that. It's not terrible, but but it is something else you have to do. And what they do is they have symbols, which are, well, it's not obvious here, but one has a star and the other one has a square to coincide with the parts on those trees rather than an A and B, like a lot of other model companies would do. That's how it's done here. So 
with the old testers kits, they give you a paint breakdown per each step. Although I found it to be a little bit on the basic side. And of course, because it's testers, it's going to give you the testers numbers and it's going to tell you how to convert their paints or mix their paints to create the colors where you could probably pick up that color in some other paint line without having to do all of this contrived mixing. But hey, heads up on that if you haven't figured that out already from building some of these kits. Now, since this model kit, the parts are from two kits, really, because you have parts that b went to the original Opal Blitz kit, which is the truck, without the half-track component. So there are some converting things you have to do. For example, you have to cut part of the cab to make it fit this version, although there is a pretty good indentation on the part where you have to cut it so it's not like you're going in blind and guessing. So that's a real help. Um, this is not a kit for beginners, not a kit for kids, because there's a lot to these Italeri kits, especially these old ones that date back to like the 70s. Uh, there's a high parts count and there's a lot of very tiny, tiny parts. And while I've been working on this, some of those parts ended up getting eaten by the carpet monster, never to be seen again. That happens, unfortunately. So there's a lot of, yeah, little tricky things to do. So there's a lot of work to this kit. Although it's not without its bonuses. I mean, it is kind of fun to build. But, you know, I did find, like, okay, I dropped the piece. I <laughs> looked all over the place for it. Uh, I had to come up with some other solution. And unfortunately, I, I lost, like, a um, main part of the steering mechanism for the uh, the axle for the wheels so eh, my wheels aren't going to turn although it's probably not a bad thing because I'm going to put this on a shelf or in a diorama anyway so you have some options with this kit and you have two different um, bodies to it you can either do one that's a stake body which is on top and the bottom one is a solid wooden block body which you get at the bottom there so there's two different variations you can do, and I'll show you both uh, a little more closely. And again, lots of little tiny pieces. There are rubber tires that go with this. Um, we'll see how good that is. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of using rubber tires personally. They can split over time. But to be fair, this kit's been sitting around since 1980, and if they haven't split now, they're probably going to last for a while. Uh, and my dad built one of these, which I'll show you momentarily at some point in this video. And it's still kicking, even though he's built that uh, more than a decade ago. And it's still going. So and we'll take a look at that later. So it gives you a breakdown of decals and painting schemes. There's four different variations here. And there's some interesting units here. So there's a couple of well-known ones is one with the Africa core which is in the overall desert sand color which is up top here and one thing that's interesting with this kit is due to it being an Italeri kit and probably sold around the globe there's no swastika included with this kit for you know many many reasons of not offending people with that emblem so the palm tree is missing that on that kit uh, option. Something to think about if you want to correct that or not. But it, this should be one on the palm tree, but anyway, it's your model. Do what you want, right? Uh, so there's another one here of the uh, 284th Grenadier Regiment, um, which is in Ukraine in 1944. And it's an overall yellow, dark yellow color. And there's one of the Luftwaffe, the Air Force, um, a field division, which is basically uh, Air Force units that were used as infantry. So that's here, and that's an overall Panzer Gray color. And then there is the Second SS Panzer Division, which was near Moscow, and this is early in 1942. And that's an overall Panzer Gray as well. So I decided to go after this kit 
in sub-assemblies, and I'm hoping this is going to be a smart thing. We'll, we'll see how this works out. I can't remember how my dad built his. It's been so many years ago, and, and he's no longer with us, unfortunately. So I, I can't really pick his brain on that. But I do have his kit, which, like I said, I'll show you in a minute. But uh, be patient. We'll get there. So, so I'm working on sub-assemblies, and here's... You know, part of the uh, let me get close here so you can see it. So I'm working on parts of the cab here. So I did a primer primer coat in dark yellow here to get some of these parts together because once you put this cab together, it's going to be very difficult to paint. So I want to get the dashboard features, the steering wheel. I want to get the leather seat, which I believe it's leather on these and not the uh, cloth that they're saying, but Although it probably wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be bad to do it in a field gray color anyway. You know that's probably possible. But you know, quick poke at the internet and my sources tend to see that they were like a leather seat, leather bench seat. So I'm going to work on that concept. So at the moment, this is the suspension system and engine and all that I'm working on. So to me a drawback with this kit, and I guess it depends on your skill, is these things are all operable and you're supposed to put these tiny little, uh, I'll call them like plastic washers, these little rings over these things so that they can move. There's one on here but it didn't really go very well so that's pretty much glued. So these are supposed to be able to move. And these little washers are extremely tiny and I had a hard time with them and two of them ended up being destroyed by the copper monster and uh, so I'm probably just gonna glue these which I think is for the most part I'm gonna I'm glad this one's spinning because this is it's uh, sorry having the drive sprocket move is I think is handy when you load the treads on here because this is rubber band style track you know, with the old heated screwdriver concept for joining them. So that's what that is. It's that style. So I'm going to see how that works. And I found in the past when I had a suspension that moved like these do, and I put the rubber band tracks, it tended to bend these in weird positions, which were not natural. Let me show you. It would bend kind of like, you know, up in the air. It just wouldn't sit realistically with the weight of the vehicle. So, oops. <laughs> so I'm probably going to just glue these things in a position and then put the tracks on so that it'll sit normally and not up in the air. You know, I've left it like this because I want to paint some of these details, even though you're never going to see this engine. And I had a problem, I can show you here. So there's this piece here for the, yeah. Because the wheels are supposed to turn. So the wheel and the tire would sit on this here. And this little hook here, which if you can see it, was supposed to connect to another piece to the other side so that they could turn and that the wheels would be operable. And, you know, and steerable. But since the other side's piece went fwing into the carpet, I had to scrap that idea altogether. Oh well. So I'm working on the stake body with this one. And I decided to put seats in there because I want to do this as a troop carrier, and I'll show you why in just a second. So here's the sub assembly so far. It makes a pretty solid piece. There's all the slats for the seats. I, mean, I suppose I didn't have to glue those in. I think you could drop, take these out and put them in. I don't think you needed to glue them. I did. And another option is you've got the uh, canvas top, which, well, if you play with it enough, you could put that on, take it off. It, it's, it's removable if you want. So that's an interesting option, providing you don't put the um, 
if I can find it. This is the oops. so here's the standard body, which is just a solid wood. And there it is. Here's the railing here for the tarp when it's folded up that would sit on the back there. And if it's it would be spread out. And that's there's the sag of the, each of the bars as it was you spread out when in use. There's the rubber tires, one for the spare tire, which would be underneath. Some glass parts. And we've got some decals here. Though they look like they may have aged badly, but we, we will see. We will find out how well they work. So, something that's been kind of an interesting development is that Masterbox had put out a kit designed for these different uh, Maltier models. So this crew is designed to fit inside this vehicle and others of its type. So it comes with you know, the driver, an officer, and a group of soldiers to sit in the back. So there's six figures in this kit. And what's interesting with this, it's designed with extra parts so that, I'll show you here. Here's an example of them sitting in a slightly different style malt here. Looks like a longer one. But if you notice, it's the same kit, but if you use the alternate arms and alternate pieces, you can make a variety of different figures with this kit. So they're they're multiposable, so you can have a, a whole group in there with slight changes. You could have them either leaning over the uh, the side, or they could be waving or pointing. There's a few different options, so you can make a variety out of this kit, which I think is kind of neat. So I've been working on them here. There's a few left on the sprue that I haven't touched yet. And I'll show you the ones I've been working on in just a second. And something that's really cool here is they give you a really nice set of gear. So you have lots of extra equipment here. So you have some late war MP44 machine gun, the submachine gun, or the first assault rifle actually down the bottom there where my fingers are. There's the MP40, standard Mauser rifles, ones with bayonets attached. There are a couple of the uh, Soviet uh, burp guns, shall we call them? That was my nickname for them. They're in there, as they would be captured and frequently used. Uh, there is a, well, it's a Bergman or some type of 1930s German machine gun. There's a group of pistols, Lugers, and uh, the Walther pistols there, the MG34, MG42 is there, and there's sniper rifles, and there's even the uh, Gewehr 4344, I think, is there. You get options for shovels, and on and on and on. So you have a lot of different choices, and you get a bunch of helmets. I guess the only thing you could complain about if you want to complain, and I'm not complaining, I'm just pointing this out, is that the only option you really have for these soldiers, aside from the one guy with a hat, is that they've all got the helmets. Minor thing to point out, but it's true. You only have the helmet as an option. So if you wanted the uh, different types of caps, you'd, you'd have to provide those. So this is the crew that's going to be in the cab. I don't know if you can see. Slowly working on those. And let me give you an example. So. Here's a couple soldiers that are going to be sitting in the back. And I opted to have this guy is waving. And I'll put him in here. And this guy's positioned so that he's got his elbow leaning. The part of my laundry machine is going while I'm doing this. I'm multitasking today. So you get the idea. So you can start getting, you know, a scene going. Let me melt back a moment so you can get a better view. 
So you can start getting a whole scene going and put a whole bunch of crew in there. Which makes it kind of fun. It's like a diorama in progress. So Masterbox makes a lot of nice fun kits like this. Um, and this came out in 2013 according to the illustration on the box. Although I am a little bit uh, worried about these guys because this is a model company out of Ukraine and as everybody knows Ukraine is well the war going on with Russia unfortunately it's affecting affecting everything you know it's affecting everyone and uh, I feel bad because I got these from vendors uh, over in Ukraine that I do do business with through eBay and yeah anyway so hope everybody's doing all right and I did find it interesting that I read a uh, a little email that I guess ICM models uh, that we're talking now is this is being filmed in late March of uh, 2022 and I guess ICM managed to send out a shipment of uh, models to the United States in the midst of all of this chaos I'm surprised because they're out of Kiev so I don't know how that that happened but uh, anyway so at least they're somehow surviving to some degree uh, I'm gonna pause for a minute because I want to go find the uh, the version of this my dad built so we can have a quick peek at that too. Hang on one second. Alright, so here's what my dad had built a number of years ago. So this one has the solid body to it. It's got his technical data information here and a little history that he put on base here. So my dad went through, <laughs> I would call it a bit of a phase, where he really, uh, he bought this green that he really liked, and he built mostly civilian models, and he just had to do this model in that green. <laughs> so, which, you know, late war vehicles of the Germans probably were in this color, because they, they kind of needed to do whatever at that time. I don't know about the authenticity of this kit, but it does look kind of fun in that color, I, I have to admit. It is eye-catching. So that's how it looks in a finished variant. It's got the convoy marker, I believe is what that is up on top. And, uh, gosh, my, uh, I don't know if you can hear that, my laundry machine sounds like it's having a fit. <laughs> um, and while I was at it, I did find this, um, this old uh, Opel Blitz and 172nd scale kit. This is an old Aurora SE kit, and I built one of these as a kid. My dad built one of these too, recent, uh, well, not recently, but he built one of these as well. And um, so this is what it would look like without the... Uh, the tracks in the back and one thing that's fun about this particular boxing is you get an idea of all these other camouflage versions you can do I always liked it for that because it has a nice illustration of you know different ways you could do that and it certainly would not be without question um, anyway you, you could do your multier in this variety of schemes just kind of fun to look at. This is not a bad kit in its own right for 172nd scale. The only thing I found to be a drawback to this is that there's no clear glass parts to this, so there's just there's no windows. It's just an open <laughs> open cab, almost as if it got burned out or something, or they broke the windows, or someone stole them, or you know, Safe Light didn't replace them. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. But anyway, it's a fun little tidbit there. Uh, anyway, so there's a uh, look at this kit and the project that I've got underway. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys soon on the model building workshop, okay? Keep building, stay safe, have fun. We'll see you soon. Bye.